Hey there guys, thanks again for clicking on. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how we make our venison garlic links. It's kind of like a kielbasa recipe uh, and it works really good with wild game. I'll give you the recipe, I'll give you the ratio of pork we put in and we'll go through it step by step so you guys know how to make it just like I make it in the shop. And if you like that, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, without any further ado, let's make us some venison garlic, venison kielbasa rings. Here we go on the venison garlic ring. This is the recipe I use in my shop during hunting season. We do boatloads of deer and elk and moose and stuff and this is the recipe I use. It's a little bit different than the garlic sausage that uh, I do for the store. This is kind of more like a kielbasa. It's got a couple extra flavors in it but it works really well with venison. This venison here, if you didn't see my how to grind venison with pork or how to ratio venison with pork video, uh, is some lean venison, very, very lean, no silver skin, no blood clots, no hair, very lean, very clean, mixed with some pork loin and pork belly trim. So that's kind of 50-50 trim, but it's nice high quality trim. Uh, so that's gonna give us a 15% fat end ratio in this garlic sausage. There it is, pre-portioned to 3.5 kgs, 7.7 .7 pounds. So there's 5.5 pounds of venison and 2.2 pounds of pork or 2.5 kgs of venison and one kg of pork. So like I said, this is gonna be the garlic sausage that we make for our store. And uh, they're gonna go into coiled fibrous casings. So as we stuff them, they're gonna kind of make rings on the smoke stick that you kind of just loop over and hang. Non-edible, you gotta peel them off before you eat them. But the garlic links, the venison garlic links, and this recipe, like all my recipes, is in grams per kilogram. So salt, 15 grams per kilogram. Black pepper, two grams per kilogram. Onion powder, two grams per kilogram. Garlic powder, seven grams per kilogram. Coriander, one gram per kilogram. Ginger, 0.3 grams per kilogram. Just a little bit in there, just enough so you can note it. Uh, cure, number one, three grams per kilogram. Sodium erythrobate, which is a cure accelerator, which is the same as vitamin C, which is the same as ascorbic acid, um, which I don't really necessarily need in this because this is gonna sit in the fridge overnight because uh, my smokehouse is tied up. But if you wanted to smoke it the same day, you would use cure accelerator because then as soon as the spices are mixed, and by the time you're done stuffing, the curing reaction's taken place and you're ready to smoke. I use that when I need it at 0.5 grams per kilogram. And then binder, which is protein, which would be soy, whey, milk powder, um, at 10 grams per kilogram. That helps get protein extraction, which means you get a fuller sausage, which holds on to the fat and the moisture and stuff a little better. But since venison has such high protein content as it is, I'm not using it. And you can probably skip it in this recipe too. But that's the recipe for you. It'll be down in the link below. And the next step is we're gonna season it up, add our water, which is, sorry, I skipped that one, 100 milliliters, which is 100 grams, same thing, of water per kilogram of meat, which is basically 10% moisture. We're going to mix all that into this beautiful venison sausage, which has been supplied by Randy Pletz from North 49 Outdoors. They have a YouTube channel if you like watching hunting videos. Here's our spice mixture. Ginger, coriander, garlic, onion, pepper, mm. and cure. Put that on there nice and evenly. Then I'm going to add about half of my water. Ice cold water. The meat's nice and cold, guys. It's uh, just pulled it out of the cooler and the cooler runs right at 32 or zero. Pretty darn close anyways. And I'm just gonna toss it around till the water's kind of absorbed and I'll give it that other shot of water. Oh man, mmm, that's so garlicky. A little bit of ginger, onion powder, smells really good. This one's quite, quite popular. And uh, when I'm using garlic, guys, someone's gonna ask down in the comments, what kind of garlic, fresh garlic, garlic salt? Yeah, I use granulated white garlic powder in this recipe. Can you use garlic? Yes, you can. And in this sausage, I probably wouldn't dial it back at all. Seven grams per kilogram of fresh garlic sausage would make it really pop. Uh, it'd be quite garlicky, but it would still be really good. Mix it up until we get our protein extraction, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute or two. Okay, it's really starting to ball up now, which means we're probably getting Pretty close, I just really toss it over on itself, get everything thoroughly mixed as possible. Starting to pull my gloves off, that's a good sign. That means we're there. 
Get rid of that, put that back in there. Now we're gonna stick it in the sausage stuffer and stuff it into our fibrous, I think they're 45 millimeter fibrous garlic coil casings. And all you do to load a sausage stuffer guys is take a big handful, flop it in the bottom and punch out those air pockets. All right, here's the fibrous casings. I just started soaking them before the video. And all you do is you find the end and I kind of flush a bit of water through it like a natural casing. You don't have to, it's not salted or anything like that. But it just helps it go on the horn a little bit easier. Oh, let's go one down. One horn size down. Nope. Okay, then you just feed it on. Leaving a little bit on the end of the horn is kind of my style. Then you just start cranking and like a uh, summer sausage casing or those type of fibrous casings, you can squeeze pretty dang tight on these. So we're not gonna twist them, we're not gonna link them, we're just gonna rope them over our smokesticks. There it is, coming out beautifully, looks good. You can see all the little particles of, oops, I busted it, squeezed too hard. These ones are breakable. They're not quite as tough as our uh, fibrous summer sausage casings. This one is a little bit old too, so. All right, yeah, that one's gonna be a nice kielbasa looking chunk. All right, now you don't have to tie these, but I'm gonna tie this one, and you'll see in a minute why. But they just get hung over the smokesticks, like I mentioned. All right, got that guy tied, and now he can just hang on like a nice little kielbasa ring. But these other guys here, I'm not gonna tie, and they can just hang over the smokestick, like so. No cutting required, there's no contact between any of the rings, so you get nice even smoke distribution and we are ready to pop these guys into the smokehouse. Actually, sorry, we're gonna let these guys sit overnight. The smokehouse is tied up. The cure is gonna take effect overnight. The sausage is gonna bind even more and they're gonna be more delicious and we'll stick them in the smokehouse tomorrow. Here's our lovely venison kielbasa ring. Pop them in there right beside the hunter salami. And we're gonna add a couple more. All right guys, so the smoke steps for these are all gonna be roughly the same. Uh, the final step is the only thing that's gonna change because you're cooking to an internal temperature on the final step. Uh, so the first step is gonna be drying. I'm gonna open up the dampers. You could have hung them at room temperature for an hour before you started hitting with smoke. But first step is dry, I do that at 150. Next step is smoke. I bump it up to 155, 160 and I hit them with hickory for an hour and a half. And then the final step is an internal cook. So it's the cook step. I bring the humidity up and we cook them till they hit 160. That's fully cooked. That kills E. coli and stuff like that. And then we're gonna give them a nice bath, not the pepperonis, I like them a little bit drier. So we're gonna take them into the cooler, cool them down. But uh, we're gonna start smoking these guys and next time we check on them, they'll be fully cooked. I guess since I have four different shapes and sizes in here though guys, they're gonna come out at different stages. The pepperonis are gonna come out first, obviously, because they're smaller diameter, then the smokies, then the garlic ring, then the hunter's salami. So, stay tuned for that. All right, while I was spraying down the venison cheese smokies, the alarm for the garlic sausage went off. So, let's pull those guys out. Whew. Still lots of smoke going on in there. That's good. Ooh. Look at that nice smoky tone. A little couple drops of smoke come off the top of the smokehouse. Let's give them a cold water rinse. And let's finish off, last but not least, if you haven't seen this episode, Hunter Salami. All right, nice a cold rinse, just to bring that temperature down and help prevent the sausage casings from wrinkling up too much. Increase our yield, all that good stuff. All right, the time has come for the venison garlic rings. Here they are the next day. They look super awesome. Hardly any wrinkles on them, which means we got them cooled down nice and quick. Look at that. That guy almost looks like he could be put on the front of a cover of a sausage book. Mm-mm. Here's our other lovely rings. Got a couple drips from the smokehouse. Don't be too worried about that. It's just humidity builds up on the creosote on the roof of the smokehouse and it drips down, not a big deal. Because especially since these casings get peeled off. But, there we go. Now, time to dive into them. All right, so how we package them is just cut them where it was hanging on the smokestick. So it's hanging like so. We just cut them at the top, 
at the bottom and then on the side and side and kind of gives you one pound packages of garlic sausage so at the top side then leaves you with the next ring cut the next ring at the bottom take them stick them together cut again you pop these in a little ring together or in a little vacuum package together and you got about one pound but uh, let's have a look at these guys how's that looking for delectable garlic rings Kill venison kielbasa essentially mm -mm. cheese and crackers sandwich meat sliced in half roasted on the grill or a campfire yes sir and these are ultra popular during hunting season we get some guys to come back for them every single year with their deer and what have you so I know how they taste and they taste good but fibrous casing so I just nick it along the the back or the ridge find a little corner of it and peel it off peel it down in a way and you won't lose any meat to the casing some people complain that these casings uh, the meat sticks to these casings and you lose some but if you just kind of just take your time start small voila I've also heard a myth that if you soak these in vinegar water it helps even more but I haven't uh, tested that myth out so I can't speak to it but there we go nice little venison garlic ring Randy will spare us a slice for the purpose of taste testing mm. Mm -hmm. so good garlic really pops hits you right off the bat the other spices we put in there, very aromatic. And they work really well with game. It's a good one. That's why we put it in the one of the first venison sausages we would put on YouTube. Because it's super popular. It's really good. But if you don't believe me, you should make it. Test it out. Try it yourself. And if you like it, come back. Give the video a thumbs up. Watch some more videos. But thanks for watching this one. I appreciate it, guys. Enjoy yourself some venison garlic rings. Mmm. Fully cooked. Delicious. Ready to go. Mmm.